Hey, what's up everybody? It's HBCU game day. We are getting ready for a big weekend. NCAA outdoor track and field action still ongoing. Lute Williams from the Black College Sports page. He's been on it from the very beginning. He joins us now. Lute, uh, we're, we're two days down, uh, heading into the home stretch for the weekend. Uh, what caught your eye on Thursday night? Is, is there on Pacific time? <laughs> we're trying to play catch up here on the East Coast. Uh, what caught your eye on Thursday? Well, primarily, um, it's clear that Cambria Sturgis, the sophomore from North Carolina A&T, is going to have a busy Saturday as she and the Lady Aggies, or she in particular, the Lady Aggies as well, uh, she will be in three events on Saturday as she qualified uh, yesterday, which was Thursday, in three different events. She ran one leg of the 4 by 100 uh, the Aggies finished fourth with a time of 43 and 17 hundredths of a second to finish fourth in the 4 by 100 Then she came back to finish also fourth in the 100 meters with a time of 11, uh, two, 11 .2, 11 and 2 tenths of a second. And she came back to finish second in the 200 meters at 22.55. So she will be in three events come Saturday when the women's uh, finals are staged. Um, she was uh, one of the only sprinters in the 100 and the 200. a and had uh, two in the 100, three in the 200. She was the only one to come through and get a place in Saturday's finals. But the other place where the Aggies or the Lady Aggies are looking to put up some points is in the 100 meter hurdles. The ladies won the 100 meter hurdles. The men won the 110 meter hurdles. They had three uh, representatives in those semifinals, and two of them came through. Tejerika Robinson came through in sixth place in the 100 meter hurdles in 12 9, while Mal Madeline Akobundo came through for AT in the eighth and final spot at 12 93. So they will be uh, contesting on, on Saturday in the 100 meter uh, finals. So in essence, there will be four events that the Lady Aggies will have someone competing on Saturday, Tyler. Um, and I, I think that th these results may not be an indication. I think Cambria Sturgis certainly could be first or second in both the 100 or the 200. That's going to be very interesting. The four by 100 team, obviously, just by making it to the finals, they're an All American, they will score at least one point but they would certainly be looking to get into the top three or four in the four by 100. So that was the situation yesterday. A lot of uh, Lady Aggies that didn't uh, advance. Paula Simon in the 100 hurdles, uh, she finished 14th. Uh, Kamaya DuBose Epps was both in the 100 and the 200. She finished 13th in the 100 and 18th in the 200. And jo uh, Jonah Ross was also in the 200 and she finished 15th. And the Lady Aggies also finished out of the money, so to speak, in the 4 by 400 relay, where they finished 22nd. Howard University was also uh, in the mix, but they finished last in the field with a time of 345.98. So we can look forward to the, to the finals on Saturday. Certainly Sturgis will be the, uh, the lady to watch, so to speak, as far as the Aggies is concerned. And uh, they will be, and she will be carrying the banner for HBCUs entering into uh, Saturday's finals. I, I know you like to keep us abreast on points and, and where that is historically uh, for HBCUs and, and in particular North Carolina A&T with their strong team. So Sturgis alone, how many points can she possibly generate on, on Saturday? Well, realistically, if she obviously finishes first, it's 10 points to the to uh, the first place finisher is 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 1 through 8. Expect her, I would expect her to finish in the top three, maybe four, because the 100 meter um, field is very strong and uh, she would really have to come through with a great performance in the 100. But realistically, maybe 12 points at minimum for her. That would be a third place finish for both in the 100 and the 200. And again, if you were talking about the 100 hurdles where the Robinson and Akabundo come in as sixth and eighth, you would probably figure that that points are going to be 
Um, if they can get in the four or five point range, obviously the, the Lady Aggies, I think, would be happy with that. Of course, going in, we talked about before that the 19 points that they scored two years ago in 2019, the last time this event was held, was the largest amount ever scored uh, by a ladies team. Um, as the 19 points for the men was the largest points for a and by the men in history, HBCU history. So I think they're going to be they're going to be pressed to come up with at least 19 points. Um, they're going to need a great performance from Robinson and Akabundo in the hurdles, maybe like a two, three or three, four finish uh, for them to get past the 19 point threshold that they put up two years ago. All right, on the other side, uh, a lot of people excited about the men and what they might potentially do. Uh, what are you going to be watching? If, if people are kind of new trying to figure out, all right, what do I need to watch to, to keep up with the Aggies and HBCU action? Uh, how would you set the table for them this weekend, Luke? Well, if you're on the East Coast at 8.02 tonight, this is Friday night, uh, the men's final in the 4x100. a and comes in with the sixth best time in the semifinals. They will be going off at 5.02 tonight. Uh, that's 5.02 Pacific time, which is 8.02 our time. It will be uh, East Coast time. It will be on ESPN2. <clears throat> Followed by that, uh, we talked about who would have a busy day. Uh, Randolph Ross Jr., the son of head coach Dwayne Ross, will have a busy day as he will be running in the 4x100 finals. He'll be running in the 400 finals, and he'll be running in the 4x400 finals. So he will have three events as Cameron Sturgis is on the women's side. So tonight, 502, the 4 by 100 will be the first event, the first track event tonight on ESPN2. At 552, uh, almost 50 minutes later or right at 50 minutes later, the 100 meters will go off with uh, one HBCU representative, Joseph Amor of Coppin State, a senior who comes in with the eighth best time in the 100 meters. Uh, about 10 minutes later at 6.02 is when you can see the Aggies, uh, Randolph Ross Jr., as well as Trevor Stewart in the 400 meters. That's the final of the 400 meters. And then they get 35 minutes to rest after that. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. 35 minutes after that at 6.37 is when the 200 meters will go off. And Javante Harding, the freshman from a and is in that field. He had the sixth best time. Uh, in the 200 meters, so he will be in the finals of the 200 meters. And then wrapping up the uh, competition for the men on Friday, the, cha- the finals and the championships will be at 721 or 1021 Eastern time will be the 4 by 400 where again, both Stewart and Ross Jr., who ran the 400 meters, they will have basically an hour, 20 minutes rest before they come back to run the 4 by 400 where the a and Aggies have the leading time. They were first in the semifinals with a 3.03.23 time. So uh, four, five events in total where HBCU uh, athletes will be involved, four of them involving a and and one of them involving one athlete from Coppin State. All right, I'm gonna put you on the prognostication chair. Uh, on the men's side, how many points realistically do you foresee a and uh, picking up tonight, potentially, on Friday? Well, a and goes in, as we said uh, yesterday, with five points as Brandon Hicklin uh, finished fourth in the, in the long jump. Uh, so they go in with five points. You would certainly have to think that Randolph Ross and Trevor Stewart, who come in uh, certainly as favorites or co-favorites in the 400 you would think that they're going to come up with at least 14 points, second and third. If they come up first and second, it will be 18 points. That would vault the Aggies to 23. The 4x400, four they are the prohibitive favorite. Let's say that they only finish with in second. That would be 31 points. Um, they're in the 4x100. They're not the favorite, but I would think that a, a reasonable finish would be somewhere in the middle of the pack. So you're talking about maybe... 33, 34, 35 points. And then you have Javante Harding in the 200. So, um, and he is, like I said, he has the sixth best time. If he finishes a six and gets another three points, that would put the Aggies somewhere in the high 30s. And I think that would probably qualify them for somewhere 
uh, inside the top 10 as far as points are concerned. We said yesterday that LSU is the favorite. Uh, they have 24 points going into today. Mississippi State is second with 17. Kansas State is thir with 13 and a half. So the Aggies are in, a, are in great position today to put up, I would say, more than 25 points in the five events that they're in for the men and, uh, and come out with uh, somewhere in the 30s in terms of their points uh, for the match, for the meet. Uh, look, I, I know the coaching staff, look, they, they want to win. Uh, they're not in it for any moral victories. But uh, if we see that type of outcome just for the, the layman Aggie fan, I think that's a lot to be excited about, Luke. Yeah, I think <clears throat> Dwayne Ross, the Aggies track and field coach amongst, uh, amongst uh, all of us, understands that this is a process, that you build on this process. Remember, some of these kids like Ross is really listed as a freshman. Even though this is second year running, there was no NCAA tournament or NCAA national track and field championships last year. Harding is a freshman. Um, that, so many of these uh, people, Cameron Sturgis is a sophomore. Uh, many of these athletes will be returning to A&T. So he has to be, I would think, you know, he said uh, two years ago that their performance to finish 15th in both the men and the women was their worst performance of the season. And I think what you have to realize is that that was their first time this squad on the big stage, and they maybe came up a little short. I think this time he expects those guys with uh, some experience under their belt to kind of perform up to expectations, which, according to now, they've done. Uh, everybody that came in ranked very high has really uh, come through with very little exception. So I would think that the Aggie fans as well as Coach Ross would have to be very excited about the fact that a t has made another step forward in terms of what they've done this year. Hey, Big South, they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> and they're fast. Yes. <laughs> so make sure you get ready. Uh, Miak, they're leaving. <laughs> Somebody else can, can fill in and, and uh, step up and fill in that void. Uh, exciting times for a t We'll be watching it tonight, and we'll talk to Lute again over the weekend. Uh, take care of yourself, man. I know you've been on the road the last few days. That, that road will catch up to you. We're, we're not spring chickens anymore, Luke. We're, remind we're not. Me, <laughs> remind me, please. Remind me, please. Yes. Remind me next time when I'm about to go. That's what you, did. That's what you need to do. Not Pull when I back. come back and I'm suffering. So. <laughs> Pull him back. But he's still on the job. Luke Williams, uh, one of our valuable contributors, and you know him from the Black College Sports page as well. Uh, Luke, take care of yourself, man. Rest up. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, Stanley.